This is an introduction to using the fantastic Flutter development environment with 360 media, images, video, and live streaming of 360 video. Uh, the example here on the front page is from a live stream from a Ricoh Theta X camera. The tutorial covers mostly iOS and Android, although most of the Flutter applications will also work on the desktop, Linux, Mac, Windows as well as the web for at least playing the media, uh, not for controlling the external 360 camera. We have open source source code for about 12 apps at this stage. We're showing about three of these apps right now. The one on the left is using Panorama to show a 360 image with navigation. It also shows a list of the thumbnails in Equate Rectangular View. So the Equate Rectangular View is when it kind of, it's like flat, like a map. And that's the view that is used by the 360 viewers to show it. The application in the center is a 360 video. It's stored on GitHub or Dropbox or AWS or Firebase storage. And then you can get the video down and play it uh, on your local mobile app. The, uh, the demonstration on the right is how to connect an external 360 camera to the local picture gallery of your mobile device. So the iOS or iPhones or Android phones, they have this gallery where you can store the pictures and you can download the pictures automatically from the external uh, cameras using Wi-Fi and then store it to the local gallery and then use other external viewers to view the 360 media. Some of the tutorials that we're covering uh, do connect to the camera. Uh, we're using Rico Theta cameras for all of our tests. Rico Theta has a number of different models which you can check out online. The key characteristic is that a 360 camera has two spherical lenses. So there's these two fisheye lenses and it'll take a single picture uh, with both sides and it'll automatically stitch them together. You don't need a 360 camera for most of the tutorials. And also you could take a 360 image with your mobile phone, either an iPhone or Android without the use of a 360 camera. However, it's much easier to use a 360 camera if you're taking a lot of pictures. So this example here, the GitHub repository is right there. It uses a motion JPEG and motion JPEG is a set of JPEG images. So we're receiving 30 JPEG images a second into the Flutter application, then changing the state of the, the screen so it's rebuilding uh, that widget portion of the mobile app screen uh, 30 times a second. But Flutter seems to do this pretty well. There's also something to uh, save the previous frame of the stream um, and then hold it until you get a reasonable JPEG, JPEG frame for the next stream. This example also has command line utility so you can extract the individual frames of the motion JPEG stream and save it to your local workstation for analysis. This application also does work on the Linux, Windows, Mac desktop. The 12 tutorials that we're gonna cover are divided into maybe four different categories. And this is based on the normal workflow of a person that's using 360 media. So in step one, you capture the media if you have a 360 camera, obviously you're gonna use the 360 camera because it's more convenient. You could actually capture the media with a normal mobile phone and just take you know, maybe a dozen shots and then stitch it together inside of the mobile phone. So you, but for our tutorials, uh, you do need a 360 camera just to capture the media uh, for this first step here. After that, steps two, three, and four do not require a camera. So in step two, the media is transferred off of the camera onto an iPhone or Android device and it stores it in the galleries section. Once the media is on the gallery section, uh, we have a series of tutorials to uh, show the media, 360 media, video, or wh whatever the media is, uh, and then push it up to a cloud and then view it within some type of viewer in the case of a still image, we're using Panorama. Even if you don't have a 360 camera, we can supply the media for both still images and videos. So you can build a 360 app and 
use the media even without a 360 camera. The great thing about using or building a Flutter application for a 360 camera is that it's largely standardized even across different camera vendors. Uh, there's a specification from Google called the Open Spherical Camera Specification, and that is based on a set of simple HTTP API calls. So you're probably already familiar with HTTP uh, endpoints, and you just send it a command using a common Flutter package or Dart package, such as HTTP package, DO, uh, Chopper, uh, a number of other packages. Right? So it's pretty straightforward. Uh, it's to, you're probably already using these, these packages already to reach out to get images or data from the internet. And then you have to pass it a body. Um, and I think with any other API endpoint too, you're, you have to encode this thing in some form. So you, when you construct the body of your API call, you may have to use a JSON uh, encode to send it over to API endpoint. And the camera, in this case, it's the same thing that it's expecting the body to be in JSON. So you just have to encode it. And this is our summer intern and the staff that took a picture using this technique, this API call, and built a mobile app pretty quickly. Because you're working with a external camera, not the camera that's built into the mobile phone, uh, you have to send an API call using the same type of technique, HTTP, to get various states. So in this case, to get the battery level of it, the external camera, you do the send it a, the similar API call, and then you get the body back uh, to get the body into a format that Dart, your Flutter application, can use. You're gonna have to decode the JSON. So this is probably pretty common if you're used to HTTP API calls. The body is coming back at JSON, and then you need to put it into something like a Dart map. And then once it's in that map format, then you can parse it and grab, in this case, the battery level. So you can check to see how the external camera is doing. We have 12 different simplified examples. So this Theta X GS1, getting started one here, uh, it's really stripped down and it shows you just the basics of making the HTTP call, grabbing the battery level, um, getting the state of the camera. Uh, it uses both a get and a post as well as a posted body, also taking a picture. Another difference between a just using a mobile phone without a 360 camera and using a mobile phone with a 360 camera is that the 360 camera will take a image, a 360 image, once every three seconds, roughly. So you can take many images in a row. Uh, you need to check on the state of the camera, the external camera, which is connected by Wi-Fi, to make sure that the camera is ready for the next picture. So this is a little bit different than you know if when you're if you're using the internal camera of your Android or your iPhone, but it's pretty simple, right? So you just give it there's a there's a status command that you can give the camera with the HTTP call. We have the example right here of how to check for the camera readiness. When the camera is ready, uh, it's going to say done. It's done taking the picture. It's done processing and stitching it together, and then you can send it another command. So one of the common things is you either take multiple pictures or you take the picture, the picture is done stitching, it's available for use from the, from the external camera, and then you display it. So similar to how you're waiting for the image to finish processing, uh, the camera also, it'll take the, the video in dual fisheye, right? So there's these two lenses, one on each side, is taking it as a dual fisheye image and then it has a, a video and then it has to process the 30 frames per second into the rectangular format. So you're gonna have to wait for the camera to not only finish taking the video, but also processing the, uh, the video inside of the camera so that it can be ready for, uh, re ready for viewing in this case. And there's also this command it's very simple. It's just to check on the status of the camera. When it says done, then you have your video file and you're good. You're good to go. You can download it and then uh, play it locally on your mobile phone. In both for the 
still images and the video. In most cases, the video is being pushed up to a cloud like AWS or Firebase, Fire, uh, Firebase storage. And if you want to learn about this specific technique, we have uh, this GitHub vi video here. Uh, number seven, video recording readiness. Another concept you'll have to get familiar with when building this type of 360 applications uh, with an external camera is that the camera has a certain state, right? So the camera might be busy, the camera might be processing an image to stitch it together, it may be taking a video, the camera battery may be at a certain level. The camera has a state. Your application also has a state. So your Flutter app um, is going to be in a certain state and you have to somehow sync the state for some of the data of the camera with the app state. So one of the simple ways, of course, is simply to use the uh, set state. And we're going to cover this in one of the, uh, the earlier videos, right? So you just want to see how, how do you get the camera response, in this case, the data from the camera and display on the screen. Uh, you just receive the response from the camera and you sync it. Although this example is pretty simple, it does start to convey uh, the basic concept that you're going to have to figure out what state the camera is in uh, as you progress further in your mobile app development. In order to get the state of the camera, you do have to send an API call. So in the previous example, you're pressing a button and getting the state of the camera. But you might want to get the state of the camera like right when the app starts. And the reason for this is that the camera could be, for example, in still image mode. It could be in video mode. The GUI on your application may change depending on what state the camera is on. So at the, at the moment you turn on your app or you start your app, you might want to check the state of the camera and see what's going on with the camera and to display the proper GUI to match the requirements of, of your user just for that, whatever state the camera is in. Obviously, the camera is in video mode. It can't take a still image and the commands are going to be slightly different. In this example here, we have another GitHub repository. Uh, it checks the state of the camera at the time the application uh, launches. And then it uses the block uh, architecture. Uh, so the videos that require state management um, or the tutorials, they're all using this block architecture. Um, you know, maybe a little bit ver verbose for some people. Maybe some people might want to use provider or get X, but we're just using block in this case. And then you have to, if you don't want to use block, you could swap it out for something like provider or something. So if you're not that familiar with provider, um, it's based on a series of streams and events. And we created an event in this application to get the mode of the camera. So that last code line in the code snippet is, we're checking to see if the camera is in video or still image mode. And based on that, we rebuild the um, the, the interface at, at, at the time that the, the application launches or the state of the camera changes. I'm going to show you an example for the code from the this repository here, which is a camera control with multiple screens. So what the app actually does, it allows you to set uh, several different settings of the camera and possibly most interesting it uh, you can get a list of thumbnails and then see the the full uh, 360 image and have it be moved around okay so let's look at the code really quickly just to give you a taste for how easy it is to work with the awesome flutter ecosystem so obviously it's in lib let's go into lib and the way we have it broken up is that there's this blocks, right, for state management. If you're not familiar with the block architecture, this is just the, uh, the files that you need for the state management of the block architecture for Flutter. And then there's this view, which is probably pretty common. And then view, we, the way we divide it, we have screens. So let's go in there. And then there's just, just two screens. Uh, the screen that we'll be using is this full image screen. So let's look at this. Right at the top here, we've imported Panorama. So this is the package that's doing all the heavy lifting for us to navigate the uh, the image when it rotates around. 
and you can see that this is just extending that stateless widget here we return a scaffold right because it's on its own screen we have the app bar so we get the the back button by default with flutter when we use the app bar and the body of the scaffold is just this panorama widget which accepts an image the image is coming over the network so this file url that we're sending over into this stateless widget is the file url that's actually on in this case the rico theater camera it could also be on uh, let's say dropbox aws or some external cloud but the camera actually exposes the uh, images as a http endpoint which you can just grab with this type of uh, syntax on flutter so give it a go feel free to drop in uh, drop us a, a question in the comments of this video or on the forum uh, it's pretty fun and pretty easy to get going with flutter because there's uh, so many beautiful packages that you can just easily use for your own mobile app and get you started super quickly if you have any questions i encourage you to go to community.theater360.guy and we'll try to help you out with your next flutter application rico theta camera the theta x actually can run flutter applications inside the camera so this is actually the 360 camera running our live animation within the flutter uh, application and it's fully interactive with a touch screen on the body of the camera so in this video it's not actually a, a mobile phone but uh, you know kind of fun if you're a flutter developer you can build uh, applications directly on the body so this type of application might be a bit more normal this is another flutter application that's running in the body of the camera the camera is running android 7 and the Flutter applications just work right out of the box. Uh, the the camera itself can connect to Wi-Fi uh, as so it can connect to your router. And there's full full documentation for some of the uh, specifics of the camera is also available. We have many more tips and especially uh, code samples. So the, you can just read through the code to learn some of these techniques at Starter dot theta 360 dot guide so i encourage you to go to the site check out a bunch of the free resources no registration necessary you can just immediately start going through some of the tutorials and learn more about 360 media and flutter development some of the flutter packages that we're using uh, panorama we, we didn't develop any of these packages we're uh we're leveraging the hard work of the community by the way uh, video 360 to play the videos image picker which you're probably already familiar with uh, from using other flutter applications that use the internal camera and gallery saver